We mourn the removal, but we don't mourn the behavior. Mm. Mm. Very interesting. That means the fear of Yahuwah is misplaced in you. Rav Shavuot said we are to mourn the behavior that led to this problem. A woman cannot announce to his wife, to her husband, that she's going to Las Vegas so she can meet a man and have sex to get back at him uh -oh. for what he did to her. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That is carnality. We need to mourn that kind of stuff yes, and not to give it sanction. Oh, man. Tit for tat, tat for tit. Well, I'm going to go cheat on you because you cheated on me. Where in Scripture? Where in Scripture is that kind of calling going out for righteousness? That's not a righteous calling. No. We're to mourn and weep and cry between the porch and the altar for Teshuvah to come upon the offending party. And as believers, we need to be strong and mature in the faith so we don't mourn when a brother or sister is no longer with us because they've been uninvited. We need to mourn what, what led to that situation. Amen. What led to that state of, of affairs. Amen. Yes. And yet we're so sensitive and we, so, we get so easily concerned. Oh, we mourn. Oh, they're not here. They're not here. It breaks my heart. But how about you? Who is heart? Should we not be concerned with Yahuwah's heart? Amen. <clears throat> so fornication is a sin, and elsewhere Russia will tell us, we may get to this later, against one's own body. When a man fornicates, he's not just sinning against his own body, he's sinning against his own body. What body? His own. The body of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. We are one body. One Father, one faith, one baptism, yes. one Father above all, okay. in you all, and through you all. Ephesians, Ephesia 4.4. 4. Yes. We are sinning against our own and his body. Oh, wow. So look, our boasting is not, is not told. Our mourning, the behavior is told. We are, should not be concerned with the, the removal of the person outside the camp. We should be concerned with morning. Not if the, how the rabbi handled it, how he didn't handle it, how he should have handled it, how he could have handled it. Bottom line is, was the behavior a violation of Torah? Hello? Mm -hmm. This is all because of love. This has nothing to do with punishment. If Yahuwah wanted to punish the fornicator, he'd strike him dead in five minutes. Amazing. Most fornicators are not stricken dead. They're allowed to survive, live, and thrive. This is... Yes. This entire chapter has nothing to do with punishment. It has to do with redemption. Amen. Amen. Restoration and redemption. Right. Verse 3. 1 Corinthians 5.3 for truly, for truly I remain absent in body, but present in rough. He said, hey, I'm in, I'm in jail. Rob Shul says what? I'm, I'm, I'm in jail. But I am there in the Ruach. I know exactly what's going on in the Ruach because it's been going on for a long time and it's commonly reported. This is not just one report. This is happening all over the place. Has religion changed much? No. Nope. The Catholic Church is common. What goes on there is common. Mm -hmm. The Protestant Church is common. You just don't hear about it They're, because pastors and elders and deacons are not in the habit of throwing themselves off the payroll. <laughs> it's common. Don't let the enemy fool you. The Church of Jesus Christ, and I'm saying that with the intentional wording, is full of lasciviousness, is full of fornication. And when a prophet of Yahuwah, like yourself or like me, arises and says there's a wrong way and there's a right way to pursue human sexuality, they are castigized as a whoremonger and as someone with a bad marriage, someone that's having problems at home. Did Moshe Rabbeinu have problems at home? He wrote the Torah. He didn't have problems at home. He was a, he, he had a, his home was in submission and his wife loved him. Okay, they will accuse you of everything. So he says, I'm not there physically, I'm, there, I'm in prison, but I am there in, this is a prison epistle, amen? Okay? Right. But I am present in the Ruach, and I have already judged. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't he read Mat Matityahu chapter 7, verse 1? Mm -hmm. Judge not that you be not judged. That's another church, uh, Babel, Babelian doctrine. Mm -hmm. 
You know, they say, don't judge, oh brother, don't judge Vladimir. Hmm. You should have said, don't judge, lest you be judged. Mm -hmm. For what, with what measure you meet, that's the same measure that you will be meted with. Hello? That is not true. Over and over in scripture, we are called to judge. judge. Rav Shaul calls us to judge, judge the brother, judge the community, judge the elders, judge the leadership, judge the fruit. A corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit, and a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. So why did Yeshua say, don't judge? And why did uh, Rav Shaul says, you must judge? The same way you're going to judge Melachim. What do you mean, don't judge? In the age to come, we're going to judge heavenly messengers. What do you mean, don't judge? Ah. So then we got to get dropped down one level to the remez or the hint of what Yeshua is saying in this in the in the parable, in the Sermon on the Mount. I'm sorry, not the parable, but in the in the Sermon on the Mount, he's saying this. When you judge someone sexually immoral because you don't like their lifestyle. Judge not, lest you be judged. But, he's saying, if the word of Yahuwah is your measuring rod, is your measuring stick, is your court of final arbitration, and your court of final authority, if you use the same measuring stick that the entire community of believers is using, the word of Yahuwah, then you can, and you are commanded, this is a positive command, it's a mitzvah, you must judge the behavior of your brothers and sisters, because if they are immoral and they are fornicators, and you invite them to your home, you are a partaker of their sins, you are a partaker of their lifestyle, you better start doing some judging. Right. What Yeshua is saying, listen, is you should not judge self-righteously or hypocritically. Uh -huh. okay. Meaning you're, you who steal are judging those who steal. You who lie, you're judging those who lie. <clears throat> and you're judging based on feelings, emotions, and not based on Genesis to Revelation. You're not using the, the final court of arbitration, the blessed recorded written eternal words of Yahuwah, for he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, Yeshua said, shall never away oh. yes you're using your own yardstick you're using your own measuring stick you are inventing and creating your own final court of arbitration and you are judging self-righteously you are judging hypocritically judge not judge not but if you want to protect your home and you want to protect your family and you want to protect your business and you want to protect the things Yahuwah has given you in your life, you better start doing some judging and you better start doing some judging real quick. Because if I don't judge, then the gay boys who come and ask me to join their menage a trois, well, what, how do I know what's right and what's wrong? How do I know what's kosher and what's not kosher? If I go by my feelings, CNN tells me it's cool. For the state of Virginia tells me it's cool. Okay. The state of Maryland tells me it's cool. The state of Idaho tells me it's cool. And Yahuwah says, the soul that sins shall die. Well, who should I believe? Huh. A man shall not lie with a man as he lieth with a woman. Leviticus 18.18. 18. Uh -huh. Who should I believe? I, and, and, if, and if what they're doing does not line up with Torah, I better judge lest that sodomite behavior come into my house. Mm -hmm. oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, brother. Don't let the church lie to you anymore. Don't judge. The opposite. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You know why they tell you not to judge? So you can't differentiate right from wrong. Uh -huh. So you call plural marriage adultery, but you call the pastor having an affair something that he's in recovery about. But don't worry, he'll be back in the pulpit within three months. He's in recovery. Don't worry, pastor's getting help. Pastor's getting counseling. Really? Is he counseling all five ministers, mistresses at the same time? Or is he just, is he just counseling his own fat head? Don't let them lie to you. you. You better start learning how to judge, but to be a righteous judge. Okay. Verse 3. So we need to judge the behaviors. We all sin. I'll get you in a second. We all sin and fall short of the glory of Yahuwah. That's, I'm not better than you. We all sin. Sin ain't the issue. It's been nailed to the tree. Our sins have been forgiven. Yeshua bled for our sins. He had sin is not the issue. Not the issue. It's the hypocritical behavior. Yes, the, the one fornicates and repents. He stays in the camp. 
who aren't fornicates and does not.